Hello GT friends from around the world and welcome to a new tea class with me, Stefan Erler, the founder of the Tea Masters blog and also the manager of the T-Masters.com boutique where even though it's just Black Friday, uh, there are no special specials, they are just my regular specials and lots of great teas and teaware that you can uh, choose from. But um, let's uh, move on to uh, the most important thing about today's class, it's the subject. Um, and um, today I will try to, uh, to clarify some uh, heavy uh, concepts in tea like um, Gong Fu Cha, Cha Yi, uh, Cha Shi, and finally Cha Dao. Why? Because I was asked uh, a question about um, uh, somebody on uh, YouTube, a German commenter I believe, if I remember well. He asked me, can you please uh, tell me what you, what you think about uh, Cha Dao? And um, I give him a very short answer. but. Um, it needs a little bit of uh, explanation before I, uh, I come and tell you this, uh, this short answer and therefore uh, we have to clarify these concepts uh, first. So, uh, if you watch this video on um, YouTube uh, on replay, please give me a like and I always uh, like to see that uh, my videos uh, are appreciated and this uh, gives me this joy to, to do it. And uh, if you watch me on um, uh, Facebook Live now, please stick around after the end of the show so that you can ask me questions and uh, I'll be brewing um, with you and uh, we'll chat uh, very simply. And um, well, let's, uh, let's start. So, we start with the concept of Gong Fu Cha. Now, Gong Fu Cha, and this is a word that will come uh, uh, quite often, is a polysemic uh, has polysemic uh, meaning. Uh, what does it mean polysemic? Actually polysemic means it has many different meanings. Originally Gong Fu Cha refers to Chao Zhou, Chao Shan Gong Fu Cha, which is a method of brewing tea uh, originating in the region uh, of uh, Chao Shan in uh, close to the Guangzhou province, uh, not so far from, from Wuyi. Uh, it's a rather affluent uh, region with lots of uh, uh, rich merchants in the south of uh, China. And um, they came up with a, a way of uh, brewing a new kind of tea back then, early Qing dynasty, that was Wuyi tea. Uh, Wuyi, now we call it Oolong tea, and these uh, these Ui leaves were heavily roasted and they came up with a way of brewing it with a very small, uh, very often Juni teapot, three cups because it looks like pin, the character pin which means um, to taste, uh, and also it was characterized using a Nilu, uh, charcoal fired, and a uh, 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 a little uh, usu way, which means a kettle, but not uh, a kettle in iron. They would use one made uh, of clay. Uh, so this is uh, the um, ritual that the, uh, not ritual, or the, the way of the method that they invented uh, and uh, used, because these teas, uh, these tea leaves were very, very expensive. Uh, it was recorded even somewhere uh, sold at the price of gold. So uh, one gram of gold, one gram of tea. Uh, and because they were so expensive, we really they thought, uh, let's uh, only use a small tea teapot uh, because this helps us to, uh, to use fewer leaves. Now, so originally, uh, Gong Fu Cha was brewing only uh, this type of tea uh, in a setting of only three people uh, with three cups uh, and so without any electricity with the charcoal and um, uh, as you can see now this uh, definition of Gong Fu Cha has evolved. It has evolved to um, uh, tea brewed with skills. It's not just oolong but uh, it also concerns uh, 
poor a lot. Um, a lot of poor drinkers will tell you I'm using Gong Fu way to, to brew my teas, uh, my leaves. And um, it also now can actually uh, be about any kind of tea, green tea, white tea, black tea, uh, red teas, uh, and uh, other kinds of uh, oolongs, uh, unroasted oolongs, uh, we all say, oh, we are using Gong Fu Cha. So you see, the, the meaning of, um, uh, of Gong Fu Cha has changed. It was only about um, uh, Yen Cha, and now it's about uh, also all kinds of, well, actually almost all kinds of teas. And it means brewing in a, with skill, and also it means a bit uh, brewing with a, s a small vessel. Whereas the Western way, uh, uh, very often Kung Fu is opposed to the Western way, uh, Western way is more brewing tea in a large teapot. Uh, here Kung Fu uh, can be also described as brewing in a small teapot and with rather quick brews. So uh, this basically is Kung Fu Cha. Now Cha Yi. Uh, and uh, Cha Yi is um, a movement in tea that originates in Taiwan in the 1980s when Taiwan became more affluent, people had also more time and more money to, um, uh, to drink tea, to enjoy tea, would go to tea houses and in these tea houses they thought, well, just brewing uh, tea with uh, simply the teapot and, the, and three cups, maybe uh, there are some um, uh, uh, a few other accessories like a, a jar, the, uh, the kettle. This is not uh, enough for the um, uh, art appreciation. So cha yi means the art of tea. So the art of tea in, in this time is to um, also add a more aesthetically pleasing element uh, for the eye uh, so that the whole experience becomes uh, nicer, uh, more artful, uh, so and then instead of just being a skill, uh, people maybe are uh, out of a little bit fancy, they, they want to reach the, the stage where it becomes an art, uh, from skill to art. Uh, of course it depends also on the uh, how well you master it, but uh, again Cha Yi originally that was this uh, idea of adding some uh, beauty and uh, aesthetics to this uh, Gong Fu Cha experience. And then also to, uh, it made Gong Fu a bit less formal. Uh, it was not just about three cups. Uh, like and nowadays it's also not about three cups anymore. It can be four or five, depending how, on how many people you have. And, um, but so Cha Yi literally is to add beauty or uh, add uh, art. However, at the end, uh, there were many, there were several um, uh, professors, teachers, who only insisted on the maybe on the too much on the art part of uh, of the cha of the tea experience, uh, the nice flower arrangements uh, the, that you dress well, and they started to forget a little bit about uh, the um, uh, connection between the. Uh, different accessories and tea and the harmony that should be produced even uh, between the tea that you are making and the um, art that you are creating around. And um, I think that's why uh, you have the concept of chashi that um, was an introduction by T. Parker some uh, almost 15 years ago. So uh, chashi mandala, again here, chashi is polysemic First, she means like a play, like you would say, or a, a tea session. A chashi actually is, uh, just means a tea session. Like uh, she is uh, a play in the theater where, um, uh, and it just means, okay, this is one play. When I finish my brewing one tea and I pass and I go to another, is uh, for, go, I go from uh, chashi number one to chashi number two. But, so in the, uh, the idea here, um, in this new meaning of chashi, it is a bit to go back to the um, original purpose of Gong Fu, it, uh, that to, to 
get the most out of the leaves and not just to get most out of the leaves with your accessories but also to find a connection with the art that you are creating uh, and the beauty you are creating around like today we are you see a little bit in a more um, uh, uh, festive mood yeah, this is almost the end of the year Christmas is uh, the Christmas uh, season is uh, starting and uh, therefore I have this uh, Christmas red um, uh, flowers on um, my uh, chabu chabu is means um, a tea um, cloth uh, napkin yeah? and um, and so I try to make a, a connection also with this uh, festive mood to have a little bit more red and green. Green being the color of uh, life, eternal life, and uh, the Christmas tree. Yeah, you see one behind. So it tries to, co to connect all this, and I'm going to, to, to brew a tea that also adds uh, this warmth. Uh, we, uh, and still being a little bit green, uh, my, co my concubine oolong, uh, which is uh, so um, mid or high oxidized uh, oolong, but not fully, so it still retains some, uh, some greenness, some freshness, uh, but at the same time it is very warming and uh, very sweet, so I think it's uh, really a very good tea that uh, fits the character of uh, the festivities. So you see here, uh, Chashi. Uh, actually, you, you could say it tries again to, to combine the, the new um, concept of uh, Gong Fu, uh, that it is to brew any tea uh, with skill and with uh, uh, the freedom of uh, using more cups than just three, and at the same time uh, still retaining the art of the Cha Yi. Uh, yes. Now, we move on to Cha Dao. Uh, and the question I was uh, asked is, does, uh, well, is there a Cha Dao and, uh, my, uh, in, in China and, uh, the, or in Taiwan? And my uh, brief answer is no. But again, uh, Cha Dao maybe is a, a word that is a little bit uh, too um, polysemic, <laughs> uh, and we have to uh, define it a bit better. What is chadao? Now, uh, I think chadao, for most tea drinkers, it refers to uh, the um, tea ceremony from Japan, uh, also called as the Chanoyu. Uh, you have a very interesting book by Castile, The Way of Tea, if you want to uh, know about um, Chadao, the Japanese way. I really recommend this, um, this tea. Uh, it was a gift from um, uh, a reader of my blog, so I really thank him again uh, from Sacramento. Thank you, Sacramento. And um, the, uh, so Chadao has uh, been created uh, by Rikyu and um, it has now s uh, several schools uh, that continue to teach uh, the original way uh, that was um, uh, taught by Barikyu, Omoto Senke, uh, and, uh, and a few others. So, uh, and this way has been passed through the generations. And you, uh, they argue also uh, in this book that um, Chadao has defined what uh, Japan has become uh, nowadays when you think of japan and when you think and when you uh, know chadao you really s see that um, uh, both make uh, our one like uh, the, uh, the extreme politeness of uh, japanese people is also reflected in um, uh, in this uh, tea ceremony the f fact that it is ceremonial also tells us a lot about uh, the culture of, um, of Japan. The principles that are in Chadao are principles that, um, uh, that also uh, apply uh, still in great, part, in, in great measure to, um, to Japanese society. We have uh, four principles, I've noted them. Wa, which is the harmony of everything, and um, 
here this is uh, one that you, we also s uh, find in uh, Chargy uh, to, to harmonize everything, the teas, uh, accessories, uh, the mood of a season. So this is, um, uh, here you could say, okay, a Chargy has some similarities to Chadao. We have K, reverence, respect for, for all things, for, for, the, uh, for your guests and also for the history, for the past. I think uh, this is also this also makes sense that uh, this uh, principle is applied in uh, in the chashi in people who practice chashi also. Say order and purity. Uh, with like uh, here we were talking about rinsing last uh, last week, and um, to make things very pure, insist on this purity by by the rinse. I say it's nonsense. You just do the um, uh, warming. Warming is also a, a way of a rinse, of a, a cleaning uh, beforehand. And uh, uh, therefore, you could say again, oh, uh, we also have this element in, uh, in the chashi. And uh, uh, jaku, calm. And of course, uh, this is also one benefit and um, almost a requirement of tea, that you need to be calm to appreciate it. If you are nervous, uh, you will uh, not notice all the um, details of tea. So, yeah, when I check what are the principles of um, uh, Cha Dao in uh, Japan, uh, Cha Noru, I think they apply also to um, the way that I'm practicing tea with my um, uh, Cha Shi. However, there is a, a, a big difference. Uh, these principles in Cha Dao in Japan are really taught by teachers uh, from generation to uh, to another, and uh, they are uh, and they were taught at first really at the top of society. It was um, um, Riku was uh, really the advisor to the emperor, and uh, the emperor was practicing this um, ritual almost uh, daily to uh, to feel all these uh, principles uh, that we just uh, talked about: harmony, uh, respect purity and calm and uh, this from top down it uh, it has really gone through all society and reached everybody even uh, the, at, the, at that time the peasants uh, and nowadays all those who don't practice uh, tea ceremonies they will still recognize oh this tea ceremony of um, Chanoru this is still really very much a part of uh, the soul of Japan however Chashi uh, is still in, in China and in Taiwan uh, a minority movement and it is not a movement that is um, uh, recognized at the highest levels of um, uh, government or at the highest levels of uh, uh, the elites. It is uh, really uh, still only a very uh, minority movement even though many people are, are drinking tea but they are not drinking tea uh, uh, maybe they're drinking Gong Fu Cha, some are drinking the Cha Yi Wei, but very few are drinking the Cha Shi Wei. Uh, and for me, Cha Shi is where you, uh, you would have uh, something similar to uh, Cha Dao. And because it's such a minority thing, it's not uh, recognized so, so why it's not so respected, and also there, there's no, there are no schools and um, and recognized uh, uh, teachers who teach this method. Therefore, uh, speaking of Cha Dao does not uh, does not work for the uh, for brewing kung fu uh, kung fu tea. Um, however, Cha Dao, as I said, it has uh, polysemic meanings. If you mean we are trying to uh, follow these principles of Chadao in Japan, uh, you can say so. Uh, if you want to say, okay, uh, the tea way, now this is a, a yet another uh, meaning of uh, Chadao, that uh, it's, it is a philosophical movement or maybe a more um, spiritual movement where you find a spiritual connectedness to nature or to, to yourself. Uh, actually, yes, there are some people who uh, seem to enjoy uh, tea on this spiritual level uh, and they call it Cha Dao. But um, 
uh, still it's a very minority uh, of a group of people who are calling it uh, this way the um, uh, the meaning of chadao that is still recognized widely in the world uh, is the uh, chada of Japan uh, taught by schools etc not this kind of uh, uh, spiritual uh, chadao that uh, some uh, drinkers of uh, Chinese tea are practicing okay I hope that uh, these uh, explanations were, um, uh, were precise and that uh, you understood them uh, and um, if you have some questions, please uh, feel free to uh, ask them on uh, YouTube. If you disagree, you are welcome to disagree, uh, but please don't uh, dislike. Uh, that's, uh, that's a cheap shot to just press on the down button. It hurts uh, my, uh, my poor heart uh, so much. Let's be very respectful, because if you dislike, remember, you would be disrespectful of somebody who is trying to uh, bring all this uh, knowledge to uh, to you, even if you don't uh, agree. Let's do it calmly and uh, in respect. Uh, yes, and also I wanted to make another point. So you see that the um, concepts I presented: uh, gong fu, uh, cha yi, cha shi, and then cha dao. They are evolve kind of um, chronologically. Um, well, maybe not cha dao. Cha dao was. Uh, invented uh, actually even before uh, Gong Fu Cha in uh, Taiwan but, um, or in China uh, but um, otherwise it's a, a chronological uh, way of uh, presenting these, uh, these words and explaining how they fit into each other. Okay, thank you very much for watching today on um, YouTube and I see you next week with another uh, tea class. Bye bye!